congratulations on the book. I tried to change so you don't have to. <laughs> yes. Gosh, let me tell you, I have literally laughed out loud right while reading it. I have surprisingly started to cry. I had the chills. I, I was rooting for you. I was inspired. I really went through all the emotions. So thank you for allowing me to read a book that I could feel something. Well, thank you. You know, I appreciate that. And, you know, I, you know, I just wanted people to know that you can write a comedy book and it still have some inspiration behind it, have some meaning. And so that's, that's why I'm, I'm just so happy that you were able to enjoy it. That really, thank you so much. That makes me happy. <laughs> but this is your second book, actually. So what inspired this one? Well, the first book was more of a dating advice comedy book, and this new book is more of a memoir where it talks about, you know, it begins with me and my upbringing, and it ends with me being an an Emmy-winning star. And in between, there are a lot of hilarious stories, but there are also stories about struggle, stories about um, how I avoided becoming a crack addict, uh, stories about how I learned to accept myself. And that um, I'm still in a situation where even though you may think that, oh, this isn't possible, it can happen for you. And I just wanted to share those stories with, you know, all my fans and people that don't know about me. Because a lot of people, they only know me from sections. So they may know me from only being on the reel, you know, and then they don't know how hard it took, how long I've been here, or maybe they only know me for stand-up, but then they don't know, you know, how long it took to get to stand-up and, and all of the trials and tribulations for that. So this is basically a memoir with true life lessons, and, you know, you'll get some laughs, and you'll get a little insp- or inspiration along the way. And it's funny, I should have known by the title, but I still somehow thought it was going to be a lot about self-improvement and a self-help book, <laughs> but it's almost the opposite. It, you're almost encouraging people to not change. So why is that? Because I think for so long, we tell people, especially women of color, that we have to be a certain type of way in order to make it, in order to be happy with ourselves. And I tried to do all of that. I mean, even if you look at the book cover, you know, it's like at one time I tried to do, you know, comedy like a man. So I was like, I put the man part. (laughs) And then it's like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna act like I got money and fake it. And it's like, then I was like, I'm gonna be a rapper. You know what I mean? So it's like, None of that works because that wasn't who I was. And what I want people to understand is that you can have flaws in life and still be successful. You just have to learn how to accept your flaws, embrace them. And so that's really what the book is about. It's about the lessons of when I tried to be something else, you know, it didn't work out for me. It wasn't until I really became who I was and was comfortable with who I was and accepting who I was that then I realized I'm okay. And then that's when I started seeing the success. Well, it also seems like a lot of who you are and how you came to be, you owe a lot to the Brewster Douglas housing projects in the east side of Detroit. I feel like you you painted such a clear picture of life in the projects. And you added a lot of humor to it, but in reality, there were a lot of struggles. You were going through a lot, especially at a young age. But what I want to know is how you were always able to choose the right path. There's poverty around. There are, you are in the heart of the crack epidemic and you were always choosing the right path. How? Well, you know, the thing for me is that I had levity in my life. I was always a silly kid. I always looked at life just, you know, not so serious, but I always would add you know, some humor to it. So I think humor is what got me through it. But also growing up in Detroit, people know that I love my hometown. They, everybody in Detroit is funny. And everybody, you know, from the wino to your, your, your high school teacher to, you know, my mama, everybody is their own type of funny. And I think that's really what got me through. And I really appreciate the fact that you were so candid the way you described your upbringing you grew up with your mom and your brother and there wasn't always the happiest moments although in dark times you do add so much humor to it that I found myself feeling guilty I'm laughing and I'm like this is this is a really sad moment but um were you a little bit apprehensive at all about exposing this um sharing these stories with your mom and your brother No, because it's my truth. It's how I grew up. And I know that there are a lot of people that don't have perfect families and they can relate to that. So that message needs to be out here. Look, you don't have a platform like I do. 
and don't expose who you are to help someone else. It's not for me to say, to feel like I'm a victim and, oh, I grew up poor and I grew up, no, that's not it. I grew up poor, yes, but I'm here because um, I believe that God had a purpose for me and it's really to help and serve other people. It's to make people laugh, it's to let them know that they'll be okay. So being able to expose the stories of, you know, homelessness, the, the, um, the situation with my mother, how my brother wasn't, you know, the person that we thought he was, you know, it just, it's just something that people are going to relate to. And it's, it's okay because it's my story. One part of your story that I really enjoyed was when you described going to a Girl Scout camp. Um, and the first moment where you realized, wait, there is life outside of the project. And not only is there, there a different world outside, but Black people are living it, you know? And I just really love that moment. Um, so do you feel like kind of having this experience allowed you to dream bigger? Oh, it definitely did. I mean, you really did read the book. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I loved it. I really, I read it in a day. You know, the thing is, is that I raise a lot of money for the Girl Scouts because the Girl Scouts really helped me to see another type of world. And it's a, it's a great story in there about, um, you know, how that happened. But, you know, that's just another example of when we grew up in the projects, everybody was broke. Nobody had a daddy. Everybody was just, you know, broke, didn't have no money. So that's the world that I lived in. It wasn't until I, you know, actually went outside of that. And it was a lady, her name is uh, Florence French. She held, she started a Girl Scout troop in Detroit. We was the most ghetto Girl Scout, <laughs> ratchet, just, we was the troop 772 and it's all in there. And, but, you know, when we joined the other Girl Scouts from around the, uh, the city, we realized that we I, that was an eye-opening experience for me to realize that all people don't live the way we live. You know, it's like, oh, you don't go hungry at night? <laughs> no. You know, they had like barrettes that was the same color and stuff. You know, I'm saying this was about how I grew up versus how they grew up. And it really opened my eyes to the fact that there are different people and especially, you know, all Black people weren't of the same, you know, economical um background that i was well with along with living your truth and being yourself you have come out and you have a boyfriend and it shouldn't be a big deal but of course it is it, it's a white man and that is a lot <laughs> you know for the public it's just shocking um and you explained in the book how you were called all just the worst names but i was always so rooting for you i was happy one that you were happy but two, that you had no problem showing that you're happy with this white man. So are you still with J James, I believe? Yes. Are yes. You <laughs> We're still together. Are you still together? Uh, we are still yeah. together. And it's just not, I just hope that sisters understand in my story that it is not about um, picking one race or the, over the other. That was not the case at all. Um, when you read our story, when you read how we met, when you read the reason why we're together, um, I think it's important for people to understand that. And we put this guilt, especially on women of color, and it's not, it, we put it on ourselves that we are, you know, we feel that, you know, this, and for whatever, for whatever reason, and, you know, we feel ashamed or all of that. And it's like, we have to get out of that. We have to get out of the headspace that, you know, we're limiting ourselves because you're not limiting yourself. You're actually just opening up your options. And it doesn't mean that you don't love your own race. It doesn't mean that you can't get your own race or whatever foolish excuses people try to do. I just want everyone to be happy. And just my last question, specifically for you, what do you feel has been the hardest part of success and fame? is really stand true to who you are and not what people think you should be. That's the hard part for me. Well, that, that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much. Paris, thank you so much. You're a wonderful interviewer. I appreciate your time. <laughs>